Hello and welcome to Securian Secure, hosted by Johnny Seifert. This is the podcast where I say it's okay to not be okay. And if you have the same mantra as me, then before we get to today's guest, please subscribe to Securian Secure after listening. And at the end of the episode, leave a five-star rating and a review. And let me tell you about my guest today. My guest today was a financial broker before joining the only way as Essex 10 years ago, back in 2013, following the footsteps of his sister Chloe and cousin Joey, where he watched his relationship with Firma Can have its ups and downs. Since then, he's left the show and become a talent agent, the creator of a huge project he got engaged to his colleague georgia and he is in his new tv show the house of sims on only fans tv where not only is he starring in it he's also the co-creator and executive producer so without further ado i'm delighted to welcome to security and secure to tell his mental health journey it's only fan star charlie sims hello charlie yes that was a bit of an intro i like that johnny what the bat that i get to call you an only fans model now well yeah partly i think people might be disappointed with the content i'm giving them though <laughs> yeah because your content is a bit different to everyone else's on only fans you're going well i want to know a bit of feedback on this and what do you think about that and everyone else is going here's a picture of me here's a video of me do you want to see something <laughs> even more slide into my dms i'll send you something you're not doing that charlie are you well, i'm using the platform for something different 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 perspective different content I'm using it for for what it is really i think only fans is a platform that's really taken a huge rise obviously because of the explicit content that um that it's it's famous for but it can be used in so many different ways and it's actually a very good platform if you signed up to it you'll know it's kind of a big mush mash mix between twitter instagram bit of threads in there now if you've joined threads it's kind of like it's kind of like that you can kind of use it for all sorts of different things so i'm i'm enjoying my my journey on OnlyFans. I was playing around on it, and there's a lot of cooking. I see a lot of people just trying out different mm-hmm. knife techniques or just how to make a cake even. And you're right, it's, it's that long-form video content version of Instagram and version of TikTok and version of Twitter that rather than having a two-minute clip, a two-minute reel, a two-minute little clickbait clip, this is like, here's 40 minutes instead. I mean, look, if you're talking about OFTV in particularly, which is the, the safe-to-work arm of OnlyFans, And that's where our show is obviously hosted, The House of Sims. That is uh, a place where you're only going to get safe to work content. So there's nothing explicit on it. It's all going to be 18 plus, but, you know, people, anybody can kind of watch it. and not going to come across anything that they don't want to see. So that's kind of where our show is focusing on. That's where season one's landed and season two is going to land as well. So we're really just using the social platform, OnlyFans, a social platform to communicate with people, communicate with fans and engage with people. And I've, I've enjoyed it so far. It's, it's, been a, it's been an interesting journey. Well, we're going to go through that whole journey, but you've just said about season two. When is season two happening? Yep, season two has been commissioned and it's going to, well, we're going to start shooting it probably in September. That's an exclusive though. No one knows that at the moment. We like an exclusive. So September, you want to start filming and then what's the turnaround? I reckon we'll be done by middle of October, early November. And then we probably won't see the next season until the end the end of the year, if not early 2024. So we're kind of going against the too hot to handle uh, Netflix season and also Loaded in Paradise on ITV. So we're going to be about that late December, early January, where you need a bit of reality TV. You probably don't want Love Island again because it's so soon, but you just want something a bit different. And that's probably where you're going to slot into. I don't think we're focusing too much on the timings and trying to go against anybody. Um, it's more just a case of, we just want to spend a bit more time of planning and executing the editing. What we realized the first time around was that the edit was going to take quite a bit longer than what we originally thought. The former show we used to be on the only way as essex was turned around very very quickly and we didn't want this to be like that we wanted it to be different um so we take a bit more time in the edit we spend quite a bit of time in that and it took quite a long time last time out for series one we look at we're looking at shortening that for series two but ultimately we still want to make sure that we're spending quite a bit of time on it so i think i think probably realistically it'll be out the early part of 2024. Well, it's interesting because obviously with TOWIE that people will know you and your family from, it's very drama focused on a relationship and the ups and downs. And it's very much like, right, go and meet at this time. You're going to have an argument with that person because we know you two aren't getting on or, oh, we, we need a bit of romance there. Whereas what you've done is craft this really nice narrative in House of Sims of 
Episode one, right, we're going to go to LA. So let's pack everything up. Let's get there. Episode two, right, we're going to have an English tea. Episode three, right, we need to see you all together on a camping trip. Episode four, it's all about Demi's Race Against Humans launch. You know, every episode was crafted in such a way that it became very character-led rather than storyline-led. So are you thinking for season two, you need to go down that uh, drama-led or do you want to keep character fronting throughout? Um, I, I kind of like the way that we did it. It was you had this overall storyline. So the overall storyline was we we're all going to get on a plane, go to Hollywood, see if we could make it. So that was the overall. And then underneath that, you had those character led storylines where each individual went on their own journey. And I liked it like that. I felt, I feel like sometimes with um, other reality TV shows, they all kind of fall in place with the one storyline and it can all be very overwhelming. So if one big thing happens, the whole cast all of a sudden want to talk about it and it all traffics towards that moment. And I, and I, and I don't understand this, why it's somebody's, somebody else's business or why it would be somebody else's storyline and why they would follow up with it unless they're being told to. We just didn't want to do that. We wanted to follow something that felt quite real. Um, it wasn't drama filled. There wasn't, and, and that's not because we did, we avoided it. It just didn't happen in series one. We just let it flow and we just wanted to see where it, where it went. And I think actually what you saw is a family that when they got here, when they when we touched down in the States, it was all very much, we wasn't really sure. And then when you're not really sure as a family, you, you tend to bond together. And that's what ended up happening. We ended up sticking together and the drama kind of fell out of it, if you like, because we were so out of our comfort zones that we needed each other to, to, to stay strong. Now, whether that happens in series two, I don't know, because we're all kind of got our feet under the table. Some of us are here. Some of us are back in the UK. So we'll see what happens in series two. But that's just the way that series one went. That's the same as Tyree. When Tyree launched, and it was very much focused on Mark Wright and the Wright family, right at the beginning, before even Lauren Goodger had... Uh, the downs of Mark, it was very much focusing on, on here's a family, let's follow them, fly on the walls series style. And then you need to bring the drama in. And, you know, you had Vans in uh, season one of House of Sims. I'm wondering if you're going to get people like E.R. Booker, who bases himself out in LA, Gatsby, who's in LA, obviously Joey and Frankie, your cousins who could come over from uh, England to LA, of just because you need that little bit of drama for clickbait, because, you know, as much as it's a TV program, you need to also be filling the TikTok audience, the Instagram audience. You need to be getting news lines and being talked about because you want the show to grow as a whole narrative. And it's very hard of getting that balance between character-led, storyline-led. So where's your head at in extra people joining the show for season two? I think it's always going to be family orientated. I think there probably will be, I think you probably will see other people start coming in as the series go on. The, them names there, we've all, all spoken about them as well whether they will come in or not, we'll see. But they do make sense because some of these guys are based here, like Eow's based. Hey, Eow was actually in series one somewhere. Um, he did he did do a couple of small cameos. Joey would be great to come on for series two. I'd love to see him out in LA just kind of doing his thing. Gatsby's here. I actually hadn't met Gatsby before he moved here. Our times just didn't cross over on Towie. So the first time I'd ever met him was was in LA properly. So I've been kind of getting to know him, spent some time with him recently. And uh, he's, a, he's a really lovely guy as well. So wouldn't surprise me if we see him doing some cameo stuff in series two. Well, because you've kind of got a responsibility, I think, to an extent that a lot of your audience for the Sims family as a whole have come from TOWIE and they want to follow that journey. And you kind of can't cut it off completely because the TOWIE audience expecting something. It can't be completely brand new. Is that fair to say? Yeah, and I don't think we're trying to... I mean, we just wanted to change the concept, so we just didn't want it to be Essex-based because I just feel like Essex has it's been so exhausted now with the show. Like, you literally cannot film anywhere. There's no storyline that hasn't been covered. So we just didn't want to keep it Essex-based. We just wanted to change the concept a little bit, which we've done and we've made it work. But ultimately... I. I'm definitely not shying away from anybody coming on the show. Like all of those names that you've you've spoken about, Vas J Morgan's here. He was part of the show. They're all great people, big personalities as well that can come on the show and just ignite it with a little bit of um, of humor, of drama, of whatever it is. So they're the kind of people that I'd like to see start entering series two, series three, series four, and so on. I just think a lot of people wanted to maybe see the family go off and do their own thing for series one, and then see where it went after that point um also with it being on oftv brand new platform nobody kind of knew what was 
was going to happen. So they wanted to see what kind of content we made. And I think series two, series three, series four, we'll start seeing a lot of people come forward and, and join in, join in the next series. I think it's very good for you personally as well. The fact that being away from TV for so long that it's eased you in gently rather than going into a show and it's just drama, drama, drama. Because mentally, I expect you at a position where you're very comfortable in life. You know, you know, you're engaged and you've got all that going on and you've got your work going on. This is a show that you've got those editorships as well as being a star of the show that if you came in and it was so storyline driven, it might go, well, hold on a minute. That was the reason I left Harry. I can't go through mentally this again because it's going to trigger me from what I was used to. I definitely knew that I was going to have a role in the show. But I think originally when I took on this role, it was mainly to be behind the camera and figure out how we was going to make this work as a creator and exec producer of the show. And I was always going to kind of drive my sisters forward, which is what I've always done throughout the years. But it just happened to fall that I had quite a big storyline when we were kind of planning and putting things together. I just happened to have quite a big storyline that kind of, if you watch me in the show, I kind of intertwine with everybody. You know, I'm kind of in with Chloe and we're doing the business stuff. And then I'm in with Demi and Frankie trying to give them advice and guide them. I've got Georgia in the show as well as my fiance and colleague. So we're kind of like trying to balance different things and it just felt that I was in it quite a lot um, and I probably will be in series two as well but I had I had doubts about coming back to to TV I think if I ever were I always made this decision quite a while back if I ever were going to come back or, or did come back it was always going to be on the basis of that it, one it'd have to be a family show and not a community show and then two I think I'd have to be in this role where I can kind of, I don't want to say I want to be in control of it, but I want to kind of know, I want to kind of know where the story's going. And I think that's what I always, I couldn't really deal with on, on Towie. I just couldn't deal with turning up on set. And, you know, it was kind of, it was, it was produced reality, right? So we, we'd have like a set made up with cameras and stuff. And then we'd be get given pointers to, to go into the show. And ultimately the words were our own, but we'd kind of have to, we kind of have a route that we were following. This is what I'm saying earlier. There was a storyline that we were following that sometimes you weren't necessarily involved with that you'd kind of have to have an opinion on just to be in the show. And I didn't want, I didn't want to be a part of that. Um, so I really like this concept. This concept works for me in my life. I think actually you're kind of, and I think as the series go on, you're going to dig deeper into everybody's lives um, and, and you're going to see something that you've never seen before even out of somebody like Chloe, who's been on TV for the last decade, I think you're going to start to see depths of her that she's that she's never revealed before on TV. So it's going to be interesting following this journey. Do you think then there's any way back to going back to Tari one day for all of you now, or because you've now set this new bar and you're going to get those depths and you're going to get more vulnerability that actually you're, you're all as a family unit. So detracted away from Tower, there's no chance you could go backwards. It's only forwards. I'd never say never. And I'm not necessarily sure it is a backward step. I just think that it was time. It was just time to maybe try something different and do something else. Um, I think the thing with Tower is, and I mentioned this earlier, it's just been exhausted a little bit. We're used to taking concepts and just absolutely abusing them to the point where it's just constant over and over and over and over again and what ends up happening is and this is what's happened with Towie you have those original characters the Mark Wrights the Amy Charles the Fairs the Joey Essex the Chloe Simses of the world they came in and they were their authentic original selves there was nobody else like them they came in and created a blueprint and then what happened is as a series start going on uh, and the years start going by the people that were watching that show as fans are now on that show and they are ultimately copycatting what they've seen before and nothing is changing it's just becoming the same stuff the same shit the di a different day and it's just like it needs to it needs to have a bit of a change up it needs to have a bit of a refresh and that's probably where chloe got to of it in the end she was like look i can i can keep going on Tawi. there's no there's no issues there i've got my place i'm, a, I'm an original cast member I can stay there and probably see this out for however long I want, but that isn't fulfilling her dreams. And her dream was to get her own family show. And same with Frankie and Demi, they wanted to be on a family orientated show and go off and do something else. So I don't know if, if going back to Taui is a, is a, is a backward step, but it would need to be a different concept. I think at some point 
they're going to come up with, and maybe this is when the series uh, Taui eventually ends. I think they'll probably come up with a concept where it's like, how much is it going to cost to get everybody back? The big, the big cast members. Like, how much will, will it cost to do one series with all of the original cast members? That's that's what I think it'll probably get to in the end, or at least they'll try to explore. Well, Georgie Shaw did that last year. You know, they had the Georgie Shaw gang uh, with their babies, the OGs, and then it was getting them all together. And everyone did it, bar Vicky and Gaz. And they're filming it right now. They just finished filming it where they've all gone to some house together in in another country. If that was the case and you had a big Taui reunion of all the OGs, would you be part of it? Would Chloe be part of it? Would Joey be part of it? Yeah, I mean, look, I can't answer for them guys, but I would say that, Ultimately, I don't see myself bigger than anything, and I don't like it when you see, when you see cast members not going into their form of show that practically got them to where they are mm. today. So, I think if they did, it would be a conversation that you'd have to explore. What would you do, and who would you be filming with? But um, I went back not too long ago. I went back on a season with my sister and a shot with Mario. It was probably a few seasons ago now. And Mario had he had his son on the show as well, so there was a bit of involvement there, and I think that's you know, that's what Geordie Shaw are doing. They're showing that these young guys and girls that came into the show were wild. They've kind of moved into a different era of their life. They've had kids. They've got families. They've got proper jobs, you know. And I think that's that's where Taui will eventually go because this concept, in my opinion, although you're going to get the the diehard Taui fans watching the show now, it just isn't anywhere near where it used to be. And I think that's because it's just nowhere near as authentic as it used to be. And the only way you're going to do that ultimately is to either get the originals back somehow, which there's going to be, have to be some sort of compensation to get them back, or you're going to have to scrap that idea and start a totally new concept. That's what I think it will probably have to happen. No, I completely agree with you. Well, look, let's talk about you. Let's talk about the Sims family. And I want to know, I want to go back to the beginning for you, Charlie. Let's talk about you growing up with three sisters, because that's a lot to deal with. A lot. Um, who was the Charlie Sims in that family unit? Yeah, I had three sisters, my mum and then my dad. So it was still a household that was dominated by women. But I was kind of the only boy. So I kind of had the the only boy favouritism, if you like, uh, certainly from my dad and probably from my mum. Very loving family, very kind, uh, a very tight bond all looked out for each other, looked after each other. The girls certainly looked after me and I did my big brother duties growing up as well. Chloe was a bit older than me, so she's about nine or 10 years older than me. So there was a bit of a bigger gap between us growing up. She was kind of off out doing her thing and then I was kind of at school. I had a smaller age gap with Demi and Frankie. Um, so we all in, we actually all crossed over and went to the same school at one point. So growing up, we all had a very tight bond. And then as we become young adults and we started going out, Chloe had already been through her her stages of going out and she kind of took us under her wing. I was clubbing with her and she she came to this rise of fame from the show. So it was good. Like I enjoyed it. I enjoyed kind of growing up and being in and around the girls. They they taught me a lot. They taught me a lot about women. And yeah, I had a lot of fun. Like me, me and Chloe have had some really, really great times and great nights out. And um, ultimately I've had some really, really good times and good family occasions with Frankie and Demi as well, a lot of family holidays that we shared. Um, but we're all adults now. Well, you say you're adults. You're, if you just turned 30, you th- you're, you're in your early 30s. I'm, I'm 31 now, yeah. Yeah, so I, I'm 30. I'm a year younger than you. I still see myself as like 16, 17 years old. I've still not same. grown up yet. I'm still a child. Same. That's exactly it- the same as me. Well, I think it's a bit of nostalgia, isn't it? It's, I still like talking to my friends about school, about people who are in school. Or Do you remember that memory of school? Or look what they're doing now. I don't like this idea that we have to separate it and think that school was such a long time ago. School just seems so easy now, doesn't it? You know, mm. when you look at when you look at life and, and the hurdles that come through life and just kind of being out here on your own, doing your own thing, like, like at school was just such an easy process. The hours were short. You had the structure and system of being protected and, not having to really go out and do much apart from some homework and play in the playground when 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 lunchtime came around and figure out what you was going to spend your, your couple of quid on, whether it was going to be something 
healthy or whether you're just going to buy as many sausage rolls as you could. So I don't know, like, you know, school, school to me seemed like real easy and it seemed like a really quick, a really quick thing to happen now when I look back at it. I, and I didn't do any further education. I didn't, I didn't go to college or university. So I only did, I only did primary and secondary school, which I do, I do miss now. Well, it's interesting that you didn't do that because when I look at the show House of Sims, it's all about wealth. I see a lot of money, and I'm not talking about that you're very flash, but it's you're all very determined to work hard and not just work, but go even extra level. And I'm quite interested about where that mentality came from. I think when I left school at 16, my dad was very much like, and especially because I was the only boy, he was very much like, you need to go out into the world. And if you, if you, if you don't want to go into further education, which I was very adamant I didn't, at the time because I actually didn't like school at the time he was like you need to go out and work in the real world and I'm going to kind of show you two two ways that that's going to happen he was very connected he got me a job as a uh a quantity surveyor at a construction big construction company which quantity surveyor is a very good job a very safe job you have to go and do a b-tech uh, at college for it so I went and studied maybe about six months of college but it didn't work out in the end but before that he was like, I'm going to show you the other side of it, which is the very tough side of of, of life and not, ne- not necessarily the wrong side, but this is going to be the tougher, more physical side of things if you don't if you don't mentally prepare yourself to be a quantity surveyor. And he, he got me a job with his friend. His friend owned a t-shirt factory and it was a big, big factory. As you can imagine, t-shirts flying around, hot printers everywhere. And the hours were like 5 a.m. to like early afternoon. And as a kid, I'd never been up at 5 a.m. in my life. So it was like, right, I'm going to I'm gonna get you get you up at like 4 or whatever. I'm going to get showered, get dressed, I'm going to drop you off at the factory and I'll come pick you up at like whatever time in the afternoon. Um, and then that was kind of like my first real experience of one, making money, but in an environment with adults that I'd never been around before. You know, there are a lot of um, Eastern Europeans and there are a lot of, people that maybe had come out of like different walks of life and I just wasn't used to being in and around that environment and he he kind of put me in there to show me that you know you can kind of go down this route if you want there's nothing wrong with that but I'm just showing you that's one route or you can kind of go down this route if you want I'll give you the leg up I'll give you the introduction but once you're there you're on your own and ultimately that's the other side that you and obviously I chose to go down the quantity surveyor route albeit I went to college for six months worked in an office for six months and absolutely hated it but that kind of gave me the realization that well actually I don't want to go back to that so I need to do something else and I was always quite entrepreneurial but entrepreneurial spirit weren't really my main focus then it was more about making money that was the drive it was like how am I going to make money here because we don't come from money like I come from a really good middle class background, but we didn't have tons and tons of money and I didn't have a trust fund for my parents. So it was like, I need to go out into the world and make money. And the only way I was going to do that, which was drummed into me by my parents was hard work. I said to my dad, listen, I've, I've done a couple of jobs now, I've seen the summer through, I'm like 17 at this point. Um, I want to, I want to get into something that makes some real money. Who do you know? Uh, I've been looking at the Wolf of Wall Street. I've been I've been reading books about um, Wall Street and watch watch movies about Wall Street with Michael Douglas and Charlie Sheen. I want to be in the financial industry. I want to wear the suits, the pinstripe suits, and I want to work in the city and, and become a broker. So he had a friend who had a friend who introduced me to somebody, and eventually they got me an apprenticeship to be a broker at like seventeen, eighteen. Started working there again. Went through the the hardships of uh, being a junior broker, which in those days in in that era was it was tough. You, you'd get spoken to in a way that you wasn't used to being spoken to at school and you get have to go out and do all sorts of hours way beyond your nine till five. And it was a tough, it was a tough job, but ultimately the rewards were big. And I was in and around an environment of people that were very smart, very sharp, um, a very driven, hungry people and not always necessarily good hunger either. There was a lot of jealousy it was almost like such a small tight family bond there on that desk there was 20 of us um we'd always kind of forgive each other and that would kind of get forgotten about and you start the next day again but again it was early hours the market was opening at 7 a.m i was having to be up at like half five getting on the train into the office those early hours and that kind of 
installed into me a mindset that I was going to go on and have to do something. Eventually that ended and then Tawi kind of crossed over with that and that opportunity began. Um, and I started my, my TV journey from there, really. How did the money change? You know, you've got all that wealth around you in the financial world. Then you go on to Tawi, where the wealth is very, very different. The wealth isn't a financial pocket. It's, you know, don't tell me if you don't want to tell me how much you're getting paid. But it's the freebies that come with it, the events, the free clothing. And then it's coming off that. And that wealth is now gone. And now you're just Charlie Sims again. You're right. I was being financially paid quite well as a broker. And then I left that job. And then went into the show and ultimately the money just went like this straight away because you don't get paid very well. Um, I can't remember what I was getting paid. It was probably in line with about 100 quid a day, which isn't bad for some young young people, but it wasn't what I was used to. The, the system's very different. I think they've got a tiered system. So it depends on where, where you're coming in at the show. If, you, if you've been in the show longer, you get paid more. If, you come, if you're in the show as a newbie, you get paid the minimum. Um, but I was on about 100 odd quid a day at the time. And yeah, we you it wasn't about what you got paid on set on the production. It was about what you got off the back of the show and trying to build your profile. And it still is in a way, like you, it still is about that. If you're on that show, it's about who you are in the show, your profile and how, and how much you can make off the back of it. Are you going to be in newspapers? Are you going to be doing personal appearances? Are you going to be doing spin-off shows? Are you going to be in all, all sorts of other revenue you know, earning streams somewhere else. So that was kind of what that was about. And that's why the show is so drama driven because people want to be at the forefront. They want the airtime. They want to be the face or the person being spoken about. So the brands and the, and the TV and the other productions are, are casting them. So that's why that show is such, such a drama driven show. I wasn't used to that. I didn't really want to be a part of that. I actually was, I thought I was quite authentic on there. I was myself, what you saw happen actually happened to me in my real life. Um, and I never tried to be anything more than than me on that show. Um, and every time that maybe I did fall into that, it didn't work out for me. And I think ultimately, when it got to the end of, of my uh, Taui journey, I just, said, I just said to myself, you know, who am I? What am I doing? Is this really what I want to do long term? And the answer was no. And I decided to go back into the real world, which when you're very young and you're used to walking into places and people greeting you and giving you stuff for free, and especially when you're walking into nightclubs and getting walked through and this is your table, the drinks are on us, don't worry about it, have a good night, to, oh, yeah, um, we're, you know, we're quite booked tonight and we might have to go and stand in the queue kind of thing. So it was kind of a bit of a, a bit of a change. And then that kind of gave me the mindset of, right, well, I need to change that. And the only way I'm going to change that is either being famous again or earning a hell of a lot of money. So I need, I, I, I just decided that I wasn't going to be famous again. And then I was just going to try and, and create my own business and go down that route. And you've done very, very well with that. And we've, you've seen how much you've built up your businesses. Um, the only the other thing you've built up as well is your relationships. And obviously, Georgia, who we see on the show, you started working together, you end up in a relationship. Five years later, you're engaged. What are the wedding plans, my friend? Yeah, the wedding the wedding plans are coming, uh, coming along more than they've ever been. So it, we are in our fifth year of engagement. She has done her time. She's waited for us. But it just, it to be honest with you, it's been delayed because I feel like Every time we go to do it or seriously talk about it, something dr dramatically happens in our life, whether that'll be the shows happening or the year before we bought our house and the year before that we decided to to do something else. And there's something always going on in and around our lives where we just we just can't plan it. But I think this year, hopefully we'll see it. I'd like to do it for season two. I think I'd like to do it in season two, just because we're going to do it at some point. Anyway, I think it'd be a really cool story to follow and it'd be a huge family event. So, you know, I want to, I want to do it for them. And I don't know the exact date, but it'll, it will likely be in September. You can watch the house of Sims on only fans TV. And if you love Harry, like I do on skinny skill, there are episodes of Bobby Norris, Kelsey Stratford, Pete Wicks, Janet Ahmed and Charlie King, to name a few. You've been listening to skinny skill me, Johnny. So if you like what you heard, please do go and rate the podcast, give it a five star rating and a review on Spotify and iTunes. And let's keep spreading the word. It's okay to not be okay. Share it on TikTok at Johnny C for 92 on Instagram at Johnny C for at skinny podcast. Thank you for listening until next time. Thank you. And goodbye.